Are you ready to get into the darkness? Well, if you are, then we're going to need Thomas back. And then we're going to have to welcome this week's guest, Kyle from Incantation, mustache and all. So hopefully he won't have to leave too early here to take a piss because this is into the darkness and we get quite worried. And if that's too much for you, dear viewer, well, then we got you covered. Because when you go to ReaperMetalProductions.com, there's the audio versions of these episodes. So if you need to be driving around and you can't be watching them, or whatever the hell your reason is, well, that's where you can go. And you can listen to all these episodes, but then you can also consume some awesome music. And you're obligated to, because this is free. And you need to give us something back, and that least is a little bit more of your time. And jam some music. And then go to Redefining Darkness and jam some music there. And then if you haven't done it, then you're going to be jamming Incantation. And the links for all that shit is in the description. So now, let's get deep into the darkness. <laughs> Kyle. What's up, Kyle? Uh, where the Kyle, where the fuck are you from, man? We cannot figure yeah. it out. Are you it's from a Cleveland? Mystery. Are you from Columbus? Hell, if you Pennsylvania? Cool. Where the hell are yeah. you from? <laughs> I am from right there in Cleveland. I uh, was actually born and went to school in Brunswick. Oh, cool. Which I'm not proud of. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, I hear that, yeah. I left Ohio for legal reasons when I was a teenager, which I probably won't get into. <laughs> <laughs> I moved to South Carolina for a few years, and that's actually where I met uh, Aaron Dallison. And oh, okay. I'm the one responsible for bringing him back to Cleveland wow. because the scene sucked down in South Carolina. And uh, and that's when we had formed we had formed Escalation Anger under a different title in South Carolina, came back to Cleveland. And I introduced him to Rojack and Blood of Christ, and he was like, "I'm not leaving." And then so we got <clears throat> we got a place in Old Brooklyn off of 48th, and uh, and then uh, yeah, me and Aaron stayed roommates all the way until I left Cleveland in uh, 90, 98, and that's when I moved to Columbus, and oh, okay. I've been down here in Columbus the last 22 years. Nice. There you go. Yeah. So that kind of, well, that puts it together then, because we were just jamming Escalation Anger. We were. A good old demo tape, and I was telling good old Thomas here about uh, the recording studio that I was at, JMC. Oh, JMC or JCM? No, JMC. JMC. You want to get JCM because of the Marshall Cap, but oh, it's yeah, actually yeah, right. JMC, and that is like right here, Litchfield, <laughs> Valley City, or whatever. So, yeah, Medina. Dude, like Brunswick, Valley City, like this whole Medina area, who would have thought? That's where we're at like, right now. Dude, metal yeah. yeah, Hell's Headbangers Wait. loaded together, like what? the hell and i live in so, Hink i live in hinkley so i was bordered oh okay. yeah yeah i know yeah. hinkley we used to go to hinkley ledges as a kid yeah i'm close yeah i don't i don't know what it looks like now but when we were younger that's where you go and smoke doobies right right <laughs> <laughs> off the ledges and when you're like 12 those ledges look like you know the mountains <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's the closest we got anyway yeah, yeah. yeah. so anyway, that demo was recorded that's the studio you're talking about where we recorded that 91 demo yeah yeah uh, yeah Anger. in, in Medina. studio out in like akron area well, no, I mean, uh, I mean, no, I guess, well, I guess he was, uh, no, yeah, he was always in Medina there. And, you know, Akron Medina is like, Medina's like the greater Just, Akron. Yeah, west, it's west. Of, so, okay. Yeah, you know. All right, yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense. I was, I always, I haven't really thought about it, but <clears throat> for some reason I thought it was more Akron-ish, but, uh, yeah. yeah. But the rest of the wow. internet's like, I have no idea where that yeah, is. They don't fucking so care. something yeah. they might know is the classic Kyle from Incantation has a mustache. Never heard of it. <laughs> right. So, come on. And if I never have, haven't, then uh, every single fan, every day of my life on the road, somebody would remind me of it. So. And I was, I was telling him, like, he's got to be sick of hearing it by now. Maybe not so much these days, but back when that came out, for sure. <laughs> so, well, it's actually been more popular in the last 10 years than what it, what it was than, it, than when it came out, for oh, sure. Wow. I think all the new era kids, you know, into yeah. – old AC stuff, you know, and uh, yeah, I mean, there wouldn't be a show that goes by where somebody wouldn't say it, or <laughs> when I do something online or whatever, someone's like, I gotta be the one to say it, you know. So take yeah. us back then. Where where the hell did that come? Yeah, what's about? the story? <clears throat> well, there's um clearly okay, a mustache. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, at, you know, as uh, most of you know, AC and NK used to tour a lot together. Yeah. Even. Prior to me being in the band and in the 95, 96 when I was in the band. And uh, so me and Seth got to be pretty good friends. <clears throat> and it was just one drunken, drugged up evening at my house, just sitting around 
uh, I don't know if he was just in town or if it was before or after a tour or whatever, but for some reason we're sitting in my living room and he was just dicking around on the acoustic. And um, he just started playing riffs and just humming shit or whatever. And, <laughs> Kyle, you got to come up to Boston and record this next month. And, yeah, yeah, whatever. Just figure it's the coke talk, you know. <laughs> Fucking man, it wasn't a month later he calls me up and, get your ass up here. What the fuck are you talking about? You know, we we got to do that song, the call from incantation. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. So <laughs> he talked me into it. I grabbed, uh, Brian Sakula, who, you know, Oh yeah, yeah. and, uh, cause <clears throat> he, he also was friends with Seth. And then a buddy of mine who was in town from North Carolina. Uh, and we all just road tripped it up to Boston, you know, just got there, went in the studio. We just played it one time. That was it. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and that's how it came to be. And then he told me he wanted me to do a little spoken word part there in the middle. And go, like, whatever. Yeah, so after that whole partying extravaganza, I'm at home laying in my bed sick, and he calls me up, and then I just I did it over the phone, you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> and so, the rest is history, you know. It was fun. It was, you know, it was the first time he ever had a guest musician, more or less a guest drummer. It's the yeah. longest song he ever had. And from what I understand, it's their best-selling record due to the song. But do you think Eric gives me any money? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so that's the skinny of it. <laughs> so then that theme, I guess, what kept going, because by the time After Party Massacre came about, at least on is I guess it's I don't on know. that soundtrack. It's on the, or, yeah, or, it looked like it was on the soundtrack. It was like Kyle from Incantation had yeah. to take a piss. Yeah, that's that asshole Kristoff. <laughs> he, he, he <laughs> well, because we played that show and I really had a piss bad. <laughs> so, it was it was between an encore song, so I got up and I ran over to the pisser, took piss, came back, and, and then he just happened, you know, because they were making fun of me. Hey, where's Kyle? Blah blah blah. And it was all on the audio, so Christoph decided to leave it on the on the soundtrack. Oh, that's and, pretty and funny. The title it is that, <laughs> especially oh. by then, everything was. You know, Kyle from Incantation, this or that, like right. you were saying, who, who can come up with the cool comment for the for the contest here? Yeah, they, they yeah, yeah. Nothing. Well, oh, you want, do you want to really so, – So, yeah, so we might as well – yeah. But we, just leave it a comment because this is a long-run episode that you could be watching in 10 yeah, years from now. So that's you want true. To so then leave it in the comments. There, your dear viewer. We want to challenge then. Make your, you leave go. your own of Kyle Inc. from Incantation. Blank. Blank. Uh, song, yeah. title, remark. It's a comment. Damn it. You know what I'm talking about. Do it in the it's, damn comments. This is going to get pretty damn silly. Yeah, it's going to get silly for and sure. And then you'll get a heart. And an internet thumbs up, and you'll make Kyle's day. <laughs> yeah, we, we were th day. we were talking uh, off air about making it like a contest, and what could we give away, and that kind of thing. And uh, maybe we'll still do that on social media, <laughs> so pay attention or don't, whatever. Yeah. But uh, when we were talking about it, Kyle actually gave us a, a kind of cool story with uh, Seth's uh, family after he passed. Yeah. So I, don't, I don't know if you want to share I, that. Yeah, I mean it's just quick. You know, after he passed, <clears throat> I, I still stay stay in touch with his wife and his kids, and. Um, I just offered to help them. I'll help them out a little bit. <clears throat> and in return, they'd sent me a letter with one of those, like, 25-cent uh, gumball machine mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was just pretty cool. Yeah, you know, the cool. fact that, you know, even, you know, the kids even knew about it. Like, it was a thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, and now you can never get rid of the mustache, like, ever, right? I don't I think mean, you ever did get rid of doomed. it. You're so. <laughs> Yeah. I, I've shaved it twice in my life. <clears throat> and... So once I shaved it, um, because Donnie Foose bet me twenty dollars that I would never shave it, <laughs> and that was I was helping him out doing his uh, Run Double Run band. Like oh yeah, yeah. so many Cleveland and, connections uh, here. Yeah, and, and it's funny because me and Donnie go back to high school in Brunswick, oh, okay. and and I had real long hair. I was the hippie, and I, he wasn't. We had like a, it was like a challenge because we both had long hair and it was a girl thing or whatever, but he used to want to try to cut my hair. <clears throat> and uh, it was like, like we weren't friends. Like it was, you know, you know, Donnie's a year or two older than me and, <clears throat> and I got to watch out for this maniac with fucking scissors, you know? <laughs> so years later, that's all past. We're growing up with great friends, you know? <clears throat> and uh, so we just happened to be talking about that and hair and mustaches and of course the AC song. So um, it was him and maybe the guitar player as well. Someone said, have you ever shaved it? I said, no, I just never had it. I'll give you $20 to shave it. Oh, he'll never do it. I went in there and shaved it <laughs> off 20 bucks. <laughs> so what was the other yeah. time? What was this, the other time you had to shave it? Um, just for the hell of it. It wasn't, it was only maybe a few years later uh, when at John McAtee's wedding photos, 
are the only known pictures that I know of that I don't have a mustache. Oh, <laughs> it's a wedding reception. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then there's a cool photo, and I can't find it. I bet Donnie has. We'll have to ask him. But when I shaved it, though, I shaved it to a little Hitler stash first, you know. <laughs> like, why, why, you know, who the hell doesn't do that? <laughs> she got the opportunity. Cool talk. And uh, well, I don't have that picture anymore. Now, uh, yeah, I probably put it out there. And yeah, then I gonna... <laughs> yeah, yeah. It might not, not be a good idea. Right? Right. You know, <laughs> you can't even joke around about Hitler stash. You killed Mer uh, Jews. You know? yeah, that, yeah. Well, that would be the that would be the uh, the, the comment that wins without what we wanted. You know, <laughs> Kaufman Gantation is a Hitler stash. Kaufman <laughs> 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 yeah, Gantation is racist. <laughs> it's like, what, oh, for yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah. Don't want to put them out there. goddamn sensitive, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, so th Thomas, though, take take it away, though, take us deeper. Oh, uh, okay. Well, we <laughs> talked a little bit about metal, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we talked about uh, a little bit of escal escalation anger, and you you leaving and coming back, I guess. So how did uh, you get involved? Then with obviously incantation, flirted with a lot of a lot of guys from Ohio and Cleveland in particular. Um, with Dwayne Morris having been involved on a on a tour yeah. or two, I think, and uh, you know just. I guess connecting with all the, the I guess it's the Midwest metal scene kind of all being connected at that time, yeah. right? Family, so you know, yeah, right. And so when Jim Jim Rowe left, I mean, was it something that uh, they knew he was leaving, and and they they sought you out? Like, how I guess how did it come to be? You know, when did that happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I know, um, like Jimmy left after the touring for Golgotha. He was already out of the band before they did Mortal Throne. Okay. He actually they sessioned him back to do Mortal Throne. Gotcha. <clears throat> My understanding. Um, so Jimmy just did that record, and and that's why when that what record was released, John didn't have a band. So he got he got the guys back. They did Mortal Throne, <clears throat> and that was it with no intentions of touring. So, uh, again, it was Brian Sakua that was the mutual friend between McEntee and Cleveland. Okay. <clears throat> so that's when he approached, you know, Dwayne and told John, Hey, I know, I know a singer, you know, singer, guitar player. <clears throat> and that's when, uh, John, got, John had a temporary drummer, John Brody, and I forget maybe who was on bass, <clears throat> but, uh, so him and Brody came and they jammed with Dwayne and then they did the first leg of touring for the Mortal Throne record either right when it was released or right before it was released. Okay. <clears throat> and that was only, I don't know, a few months or half a year at the most or yeah, something. That, right. would, that would have been in 93. And then uh, <clears throat> John's looking for a permanent drummer, and that's when he was told through Dwayne and through Brian <clears throat> about going to check me out. He came to check out Dora, of course, and and myself. And John came to an Escalation show. I think it was Flash's show. And uh, really love the aggression, you know. Obviously, yeah. Escalation is nothing like Incantation. Right. But <clears throat> he's seen past the two different styles and just liked the aggression that he's seen on stage. Okay. I would never played blast beats at that time. I, I didn't know. I mean, I knew Incantation, but I never sat and tried to play it because at that time I had no, really no interest. You know, it wasn't something I, I liked what I was doing, like yeah. thrash, speed metal, stuff like that. Sure. Um, yeah, so John asked through Brian and uh, – yeah, I accepted it. You know, I wanted to, to you know, it was a touring band. I already now has two records out, and they wanted to finish the touring for Mortal Throne. So right. <laughs> who did I call? I called Rojack. Okay. <laughs> I said, Dude, I, I need to learn how to play blast beats. <laughs> 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 Which he's not a drummer. But the, the crazy thing is, is Tom had already started Funeral Pyre, and I was helping Tom do Funeral Pyre stuff. In was, was, Gino, to to was Gino involved at that time too or no? Uh, no, this was just, just Tom at that time. Like talks with Gino, but only Tom and I, it was just like the Tom project and he wanted to, uh, you know, kind of put more of the full band together and, uh, play out live. Okay. And so Tom just learned playing drums cause he's ultra talented and he just is like, yeah, it's just like this, man. That's all you got to do. <laughs> so I got to learn the, the, the funeral pyre songs and that's what helped transition into, I'm like, ah, oh, this is kind of like what Jimmy does, but Jimmy's got that downbeat thing, and you know, right. completely different. But it it set me in the right track to like start thinking, you know, death metal way of playing. And here it turns out, like I really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he stuck with it for I mean, what next thirty years <laughs> yeah, so, plus? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so I brought my own element to it. You know, right. I found 
blasted more like the earlier Terrorizer stuff, you know, was kind of my, my comfort area. Okay. <clears throat> and then just, um, you know, some people say I have a, a signature style of blast as well, but I think it's just a dynamics thing that's in it because it's just, it's a simple blast, really. Right, right. <laughs> well, I think, but, I think you remind me of Ro in the way that you at least kind of nod to what he brought to Incantation and kind of carried that with you so that wasn't lost but then like you said added your own little flavor to oh, it. oh yeah. yeah yeah no i learned a lot from jimmy by learning jimmy's songs and there's still stuff i don't know what he's doing that he he's amazing he's he, a great he drummer, brought yeah. such a unique style to that band and to je- and death metal in general totally that he still carries in his band primitive now you yep. know I agree. Uh, <clears throat> it's uh yeah it, it's really good it's really cool so i was really honored to <clears throat> uh to fill those shoes and then, you know, having, and then him, I'm not going to say support me at that time. Cause I mean, he didn't want to see anybody, you know, he probably just wanted in can to fail because you know, they weren't getting along. John yeah, and Jim right. Right, you know, really get along. So if you're not getting along with somebody, you're not going to want them to succeed, sure. <laughs> you know, but I never had a problem with Jimmy. I play, <clears throat> we play uh, up that way and he'd come out and That's he may cool. have bad words or something with John, but, me and Jimmy always got along well, nice. and that continues now. You know what I mean? Like, now he and I are real good friends. That's good. Uh, actually, if he watches this, he's going to be mad that I didn't call him back last night. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, but, what- uh, yeah, so I, I, I incorporated his style in mine <clears throat> and then carried that for obviously many albums. Right. You know, after that. Well, I wanted to give people some frame of reference because while we're all talking like we know what the hell we're talking about, uh, yeah. most of these people don't know who Tom Rojack is. And, uh, That's so, true. <laughs> so, yeah, so so Tom Rojack, uh, decrepit, uh, blood of Christ. Um, Northeast Ohio metal Kind of metal, scene, metal legend from, yeah. from the area, yeah. 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 So. And if anybody that's familiar with my other band, Shed the Skin, yep. if they did any research with that, they'll see that it's a whole nod to Tom Rojack and Blood of Christ and everything he brought. So maybe that name is a little familiar. <clears throat> and that's, you know, that's how Shut of Christ, uh, Shut of Christ, Shed the Skin <laughs> even came about <clears throat> because we did a, a Blood song. of Christ tribute show. Huh? And it's a song, and, and song that, title. Yeah, exactly. Blood of Christ and, song, and, title, and yeah. song title, yeah. I mean, it's uh, like so. probably the most Ohio band you could do, at least in death metal, because there's yourself from – well, you're from Cleveland, but you're in Columbus, so you'll represent Columbus. <laughs> then you got uh, Ash. Ash from Cincinnati. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Sorg's originally from like Kent, so we'll just put him in Akron. Uh, and then <laughs> yeah. yourself will then be the Cleveland connection as well. <laughs> well no, 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 yeah. uh, Ed Stevens. Oh, Ed Stevens. So yeah. you got enough. So you got every major yeah. city. You're missing He's Canton, from- Toledo. You're, you're, you're a little <laughs> off, but that'll be you know the the future project, I guess. Right, <laughs> right. So getting back to Incantation, though. Uh, I'd like to kind of go back to the time when you were entering in, and this, this might have preceded you a little bit, but uh, well, I don't know if anyone knows the whole story. Uh, I certainly don't know the true story, I, I don't think, because um, I feel like there's a lot of conjecture surrounding, like, Mortal Throne and then Upon the Throne and why that happened. You know, there's a lot of hearsay about, oh, it was something to do with the rec- recording quality or something like that, but, you know, is there more to that story that people don't know or, you know, because it was right you know usually when this shit happens like we talked about like it's like years later bands re-record a record or do this or that and this was like the next year you know um that that came out so although especially with like vader or whatever the whole being unhappy redo early on the process thing isn't always entirely that up yeah that's true too form but it was was just a relapse trying to capitalize on it it's the bottom line that was the the moral the the moral throne was the mick John liked the Upon the Throne mix, <clears throat> not particularly in that order, um, because they reversed the order on it. <clears throat> so it was just a raw a raw mix of the record. And um, so Relapse went ahead and just re-put it out. You know what I mean? Because at that time, they didn't know. Like, Incam was fighting with the label as well. Okay. It, it was Everything was a mess. When I joined the band, you know, between the X members and Relapse, and John still trying to move forward, it was just a big wreck. Really bad record deal. Relapse was also a new label, so yeah. you know, there was a lot of just a lot of shit, and, and, and just it created a lot of chaos. <clears throat> so uh, at that time, there was like one more. I think it was a three album deal, so there would have been one more record. And not knowing if John was going to fulfill that or not, there was a lot of business stuff that both sides did not know and understand. So it was kind of a bad 
bad record deal. <clears throat> um, and so the band, you know, the label didn't know if the band was going to continue, you know, so they went ahead and put that album out to just to kind of bank on sales. Gotcha. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, it was just, it was kind of a mess at that time. I mean, it's cool that they did because I like that that recording. I do that too. Mixed part of myself, too. I yeah. think a lot of people do. And the only reason why they reversed it was just to make it look like it was something else. <clears throat> okay. You know, no other reason, which is bullshit because you know you spent sure. a lot of time making a running order for a record, right? And, and then the label just decides to flip flop it. Yeah. You know, it flows better the way it is on Mortal Throne, at least right. in my opinion and, and a lot of people's opinions, but. Um, and to get somebody like Beth, Ben, uh, West Ben Coster to come in and do this amazing artwork, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, insane. It really just, <clears throat> it was just a good sales thing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, th thanks for clearing it up because it was like yeah. a mystery to me for a long time. So then mm -hmm. you joined, I guess, were you in already by the time they released that upon the throne or did you come in just after that? I'm in before that. That okay. wasn't even a thought. <clears throat> I mean, we didn't see that coming because uh, I came in '94, and that actually I don't think even came out until '95. '95, I think. Uh, yeah, later '95. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> you know, the the touring was pretty decent. So I think that was just another uh, another record we can kind of tour on too, yeah, at least right. in the label eyes. You know what I mean? Like, sure. oh, stay out on the road because I was young. John was young. We're hungry. I just joined the band. I joined the band because this band tours, and yeah. I, I want to. I want to tour. I want to play metal. So, we tore our asses off. You know what I mean? Right. It, uh, to the point where we we moved out of our homes, even you know, and kept stuff in storage because we were on the road more than we were at home. Right. Well, smart. <clears throat> then, smart uh, thing to do. Yeah, I mean, John started writing right away. You know, that's why uh, <clears throat> not too long long after we were able to do the Forsaken, Forsaken Morning that you had up there, and but yeah. well, we had recorded some stuff prior to that, even like '96 demo. Yeah, there was like yeah, promo or something, right? Pro yeah, '96 promo. Yeah, <clears throat> um, so it was cool. It was a lot of fire, and uh, we ran with it. <laughs> so with the vocal situation, so after obviously the Craig thing happened, I, does it, he guests on uh, Forsaken Morning, right? Yeah. And yeah. then Daniel kind of uh, took over, and that whole Daniel thing's a little weird, obviously, with Kasim being from Mexico, and I don't know if you could shed light on any of that, too. Yeah. Well, okay, so, you know, I join, and and then, uh, you know, Dwayne's the vocalist, and he's doing fine, but, and then in 95, um, we're touring Mexico. Uh, John already is friends with Daniel <clears throat> from the Cenotaph days. Okay. And I'm introduced to Daniel. We had did uh, small shows, small tours with Cenotaph and the Chasm. He was still, Chasm was still kind of a newer band at that time. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, it just, it wasn't working. Dwayne wanted to stay in Mexico. Him and, and Magic Beer, a bass player, had met some girls and, and it was just kind of, we didn't know what was going on, you know, so yeah. it was time, it was time to move on. So we asked Daniel if he would session until we had found, you know, another vocalist. So he, he just did some live stuff, and then, but when we did uh, the EP, um, you know, by now I had met and got to know Craig, <clears throat> and um, so I had asked Craig if he would come and session on the record, and that was also time where we did the tribute to the GOAT. So there was still a lot of the old ties from, you know, back Jersey way. <clears throat> okay. um, and uh, so, yeah, I just tried to, I tried to mend it between everybody. I, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm fresh in the band. These guys are cool over here. These guys are cool here. They kind of got issues, but it's like, man, it's one big happy metal family, you know? Right, right. Um, but, and then after, um, yeah, so after, you know, Craig just sessioned for that, for the EP, <clears throat> then we asked Daniel if he would, we wanted him to come on full time, you know? Knowing though all the time that his band is the is the castle, right. you know that that's his main baby. So, but he stayed with us until '97, and the Chasm got an offer to play Milwaukee Metal Fest, and that was right in the middle of that Morbid Angel tour. So he had told us he was going to do that, <clears throat> and that was going to be his last show because we had to continue the tour, and it just didn't work out. You know, we yeah. would have had to find somebody to fill in on a few shows, anyways. So we had <clears throat> called upon a buddy just to finish out the tour, and and then that was a disaster time for for myself as well. That's when I rolled the van. <clears throat> oh man! And yeah, I was 
smacked out. You know, I had a little, little small substance, substance abuse problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was very big. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but yeah, so that was, you know, Daniel's, you know, part of the whole, the whole band. And of course, being there for Diabolical, <clears throat> you know, yeah. and I wrote most of those songs. Some of those are first things that he and I wrote together, <clears throat> and we just didn't track them until Diabolical came around, you know. Oh, okay. Now, did you pull the uh, keep the Cleveland going there and pull a Jim Kanye when you're a drummer writing and do a bunch of humming and stuff, or you actually play a guitar and c- contribute in that way? Now, I definitely don't play guitar. I'm a really crappy guitarist. <laughs> but <laughs> how do you write I then? Uh-huh. <laughs> how do you do your writing when you're then i hum i hum stuff awesome <laughs> yeah i'll uh i'll hum a lot of riffs you know i mean john, john obviously writes majority of it but i i write you know especially even more recently i've written full songs <clears throat> and i just hum it all out um and then john understands you know we have pretty good <laughs> working like that <laughs> yeah uh, but yeah so i you know just you know when you're when you're writing and you, and you're just he's got a riff or something and I'll hear a little bridge or a punch or you know oh hey what are you gonna do this and that and that's what that's the whole writing process you know what I mean that's what's great uh, you just get in there and you and, and you knock it out together I kind of miss those days we've been spread apart for so long we yeah. can't get together as much as we used to so now it's a lot of send me the riffs I'll play it and then I hum it back and. <laughs> 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 is that your is that your setup now? Because it looks like you're obviously well set up be there behind you. Um, you track, I've, seen, you track I've seen stuff too on social media and all that. So is that what you uh, do? Like incantations, shed the skin, and all that? Because even you know my in my inside too behind the scenes, they're bringing up you know being at Kyle's and working on stores, the studio located yeah. in your place. Yeah, I've been I've had uh, for the last ten years, I guess I've been tracking everything at home. This is my my second studio. I moved here like two years ago, but I had tracked <clears throat> at my last one. Uh, I think I think from Dirges Dirges on, um, I just started tracking everything, all the incant stuff, all the shed to skin stuff, uh, and then you know I've done the Estuary record, <clears throat> just did the Hell Is Here record. Um, oh, yeah, you know, so yeah, every, anything that I'm. I'm involved with. I can. I track all my drums at home, and then I, I'm I'm equipped to track everything: guitars and vocals. And we do, you know, ninety percent of the in cam records uh, at my place. <clears throat> so nice. it's. Uh, I, I can't mix. You know, I I can do minor editing, but I'm just a tracking guy. I'm yeah. just a drummer with fucking recording gear, really. <laughs> yeah. Well, it gets a lot of the That's stuff, nice. fundamentals out of the way that take the right. most time and and soak up the most budget and. You know, mm-hmm. I could really make or break a project. Plus, yeah. I, I think there's something to be said being inside your element. Like, it's a comfort zone. Like, you know, you don't have to worry about just... Well, performance-wise, right? I mean... Yeah, or just being at a studio that you're, you're just constantly feel the weight of, like, every minute costing yeah, you whatever right. obscene amount of money. Like, that ain't good yeah. for a good take. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, there's pros and cons. I miss going to Karecki's. You know, we, yeah. we went to build Karecki's for so many years, and well, just going there and setting up. His room was amazing. They got the best drum tones, and you know. But you live there for three, four weeks, or at right. least for the Incan records. I can't do that anymore. You know, my my home business has just got way too crazy. I can't. That's another reason why I can't tour anymore. You yeah. know, I, you know. So it was nice to do that. But yes, you are under the, you know, the money microscope. It's like, oh fuck, you know. Like I like to do another take. Well, we kind of should just move on. You know, <laughs> here, yeah, I get a little too comfortable. Like I don't. Sometimes maybe I won't be as aggressive because I'm, I'm at home, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. right. Eh, I can fix that later or something. I never get around to it. I'm like, yeah, that roll is fine, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the the difference of between the second and the moment where you're like you can fix things to like if you save it and then hear it, where like a week later it's just like. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. Like uh, I could care less. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or it's just like I, I, I hear it. I don't feel like fixing yeah. it. Fuck that. Yeah. You know? yeah. It is what but, it is. Yeah. And then that record comes out though, and you're like, oh fuck, why did I, I just fix that? <laughs> I was right there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So that's the pros and cons, you know. But I, 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 you know, I wouldn't trade it. I like, I don't, you know. What's great is I don't have to haul my kid around. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, holy crap! I got my studio kit. That stays set up 24-7, and then I have two touring kits, you know, for when I play out live. So, nice. you know, screw tearing all that shit down. I used to just have the one kit, you know. Right. 
for touring and live. Not anymore. <laughs> Not for years now. So. Yeah. I do the same. I have a setup at the house with, with the kit, and then you know I have stuff in cases just ready to go if, if that yeah. ever needed to happen, which doesn't happen for me anymore either. But, yeah, yeah it's kind ready, of a similar ready to story. Ready if and when. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but so obviously, uh, Incantation is not your only claim to fame. Obviously, uh, uh, Acheron and, uh, you know, you've been involved with some other stuff too. And so how, you know, well, that's a Columbus connection, right? Because Vincent's down there. Is it something that kind of happened naturally or did it not happen until yeah. you moved to Columbus? Yeah, that, that was kind of a weird thing. So, <clears throat> like, neither one of us, I mean, we knew each other only from, you know, the early days and then playing Florida and, you know, crossing paths or whatever. Uh -huh. But when I moved to Columbus, I didn't know he was in Columbus. <clears throat> Turns out he moved to Columbus within the same year that I did. He moved up here for a girl and just got sick of being in the Florida sun. And, you know, he's a very white, white person, you know, <laughs> yeah, so right. the sun do not get along. And, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, so <clears throat> once he, he found out I was living in Columbus, but he found out through Jeff Grossland. I happened to be, when I first came to Columbus, I had left Incantation. Like I said, I, in 98, when I flipped the van, I took a break to clean myself up. I came to Columbus to go to rehab. Okay. Uh, and and there was work down here because I was still in construction. Uh, <clears throat> so I cleaned all myself up. So in 99, I went and was helping out Vital Remains. I figured that would be a good way to get my chops back up. Right. <clears throat> that stuff's pretty brutal. Yeah, it's uh, I was in Providence, and I was helping out Vital and, and – uh, Jeff Grossland then was a mutual friend, and Vince was wanting to put together a project, Wolf and Society. Okay. Uh, That's and, with the Dark Throne guys and stuff, right? Or Dark Funeral. Yeah, Dark Funeral. Uh, uh, Lord, Lord Airman, Airman from yeah. uh, Dark Funeral, and then uh, <clears throat> two of the guys from Electric Hellfire Club. Oh, okay. And, and myself and Vince, and uh, local guy here on keyboards, uh, Aaron Werner. <clears throat> okay. But at the time, Jeff Grossman was supposed to do vocals okay. or some vocals or be a part of it, however. Um, but at the end of the day, he never showed up to the studio when we were doing this project. I mean, Aramin flew all the way in from Sweden. Wow. So it was Vince who organized this, and it was pretty cool. It was a fun thing. It was supposed to do a full length after the EP, and this didn't happen. So we had this album's word of tunes that I had already learned. So he was like, well, I'm just going to put it out as Asheron. I was like, okay. So that was kind of my, you know, now I'm an Asheron. <laughs> an Asheron style band. Because he kind of disbanded it. Right. You know, he's done a million times. Yep. And, uh, but I stuck with him. I stuck around for, uh, 12, 12, 14 years. Yeah. I had a few records and all that. And, and then I finally just had to leave it. Just, me and Vince can't work together anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Ran but yeah, course. So, yeah. So we did that and, you know, I've been doing the Shed the Skin since 2000, shit, t 10 years now? I, I can't remember when we started now. Uh, yeah, yeah, in the third yeah. round. Yeah, yeah, yeah d definitely uh, around that first head bash, or the second head bash of the Agora was around when I, I think, like, the second album definitely wasn't around. Uh, I think it was being thought about. Or, yeah. And the 7-inch was definitely out. Yeah. yeah, right. I think we played it on the seven for the seven inch, and maybe you might be right. I think if I recall correctly, <clears throat> Eight, but... let's see, eighteen, sixteen, four. Yeah, it was two thousand twelve because it turns out every two years we put a record out so far. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Next week, uh, the third uh, Shed to Skin full length comes out, uh, the Forbidden Arts on Hell's Head Bangers. So another reason, or keeping the Cleveland scene there, you know. Yeah. We, that's why we like to stay on the label, um, just to kind of keep it all, you know, the whole Cleveland thing. So and shit, I'd love to say that that's because we're so on the ball, and that's why our timeliness of posting this video <laughs> yeah, right around that, that record. You know, that's really what we did. It, it was no happenstance, <laughs> yeah. no luck out at all. <laughs> that or my or my late response to even seeing your message. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta check that messenger more. <laughs> post, post, dude. You sent me smoochy faces. I was like. Uh, I guess that's a yes. <laughs> I thought you sent those. No, you sent those. I sent those. I said, "Hey, Kyle, you want to be on my show?" And then you sent 
<laughs> like, All right, he's gonna be on. <laughs> yeah, then it, then oh, crickets yeah. for a while. So yeah. there you go. Kyle from Incantation likes to send em- emojis. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, I didn't even know. I thought you sent those to me. I was Dude, like, kind oh of man, we we're like, so what asked, the hell? You ass dialed me emo. There's another one. Kyle from Incantation <laughs> ass dials. Kissing <laughs> <laughs> <Interesting> emojis. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. dude, that's crazy. <laughs> well, before we get off the music, I do want to ask you about Hell is Here because I do know some of the, your counterparts involved with that. But I know it's yeah. something you guys just recently recorded. And then hopefully we can get to some uh, some talk of some horror. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, um, Hell is Here is a cool thing. So back in February, I get a call from Dallison uh, asking me if I would be interested in playing drums to a project he wants to create <clears throat> and more of like a discharge uh, style band. So, yeah. I, hell yeah. It was just cool because me and Aaron hadn't jammed together years and years and years up until like two years ago. We did a little Escalation Anger reunion, which was the first time since I left the band in 95. Wow. Uh, so that was cool. And then like six months later, I did. he asked me if I'd play drums for a little, uh, Fear cover band, a little one off gig that <clears throat> a little shithole bar that you guys have uh, on the west side that does around Halloween. Um, okay. I forget the name of it, but anyways, <clears throat> but that was fun. Now that's class, so, maybe or something. Yeah, yeah. I think that's it, yeah, right? I right on uh, Detroit or something, yeah, Madison, yeah. Detroit, something like that. Um, yeah. So, anyways, um, so I'm like, yeah, that sounds that sounds awesome. He's like, cool. I'm gonna ask uh, Matt Zorg if he'll play guitar and if Larry would play bass. Like, oh, that sounds freaking great. <clears throat> so he asked everybody, and everybody said yeah. And Aaron wrote like five songs. Zord wrote six songs. Larry wrote a song. Now we got ten songs in a matter of seemed like minutes, literally like within days. Wow. It's like, okay, well, let me just start listening to these real quick. And then, uh, hell, it was only two weeks later. Um, Aaron and, and Zor came down separately, and I jammed their tunes with them. They're like, yeah, this all works out really good. Why don't we set up tracking right away? I'm like, yeah, we can turn around and track my place in like two weeks. Nice. And then that's when uh, – the Corona hit hard. <clears throat> and so that particular weekend was like the first weekend they said, well, actually the, the weekend Aaron came down, they put the band like you're not supposed to travel or whatever, but yeah. I'm an essential worker because I'm in construction. So I was like, well, here, just have a letter from my company that says you're working with me. If, right. you know, so we came down anyways, but, and then a couple weeks later, then when everybody's going to come back, it is like, you know, eh, we better not. I was like, yeah, I mean, my wife are just going to, not have anybody over and see how this plays out. <clears throat> so now we sat like what, two months right, with this record that's just ready to go. And then so it was only a few weeks ago, I guess. And then uh, everybody came down. We tracked, tracked drums, went great. <clears throat> they came down individually the following weekends, and we tracked all the guitars here. And then, uh, and then a week later, uh, Aaron came back, and we tracked vocals here, and Laird did vocals. It's kind of like the extreme noise terror where they do the vocals back and forth. Yeah, yeah. So Aaron's just a pissed off, you know, angry guy, yeah, and, and Laird has yeah. like death metal ish, you know, d- deeper vocals, and cool. so it came together really quick. And then uh, they gave it to Noah there in Cleveland to yeah. mix it. And I just got the final mix uh, this week, a couple days ago, or last week or something. And oh, nice. uh, it came about it really quick. So it was really cool. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, now I just got to shop it. <clears throat> I'm just waiting for Aaron to get me a bio and um, just going to start hitting up some, some peeps that I know and see if we can get it out there. Send some, really stuff, yeah, send some stuff my way, too. But yeah, that's cool. So it was really cool to do the Hell is Here. And well, the bummer part is we first were calling it End Times. And uh, he said he searched everywhere, couldn't find anybody use that name. I'm like, okay, that's awesome. We like that. And mm-hmm. then a month, month, uh oh, oh, and gotcha. then a month into it, we find another band that uh, was called that. It's like, oh, okay. oh, that's but Hell is Here is cool. It is. It oh. just reminds me of the Crown record. I love that Crown record, and that's what I think of. Uh, is that is what here. that's called? Yeah, Hell is Here. Yeah, uh, it's a good one. I'm not a- I'm not a big Crown fan, so damn, now I have to change the name. <laughs> yeah, <just laughs> well, you are a big horror fan, though. Yeah, and a little bit. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just as confused by that too. Like, what uh, if you do? It, it, it seems like from like social media and stuff I see, like either you're more involved than than what meets the eye, or you're just there at the right place and the right time, and getting a bunch of photos that it makes it look like. Well, because like, what, what isn't it like? Well, obviously the last name Severn, but isn't isn't well, like the movies Sever- came out in Severin. Well, yeah, that there's Severin, Severin. productions. Severin. 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 
Foods, which is basically a distribution company. And it's it has an I. It's S E V E I. Yeah, okay. and nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with you. No, unfortunately not. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, because they're doing a lot. I'm like, because I'm like, damn, it, this has. I was like, yeah, maybe it's a combo. They. It, I mean, it's the most so. moronic thing to assume because it's like it's not. <laughs> it's not your last name at all. Yeah. But no. it, but to be that moron as I was, I'll admit it. Uh, it was like, damn, if that has anything to do with Kyle, they're cranking out some shit. Well, I say I thought maybe he, he like him and someone else went into business and they just smashed right, the name right, together. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Yeah, N and then cool. Kyle Seven. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, now. No, nothing like that. You, so I mean, business-wise, you know, the closest thing is is when, you know, who doesn't want to shoot a horror movie, right? So, you know, I, I've always wanted to shoot one, and then when I met Kristoff, you know, he was already shooting porn and, right. you know, do, you know, understands the shooting aspect of it. And <clears throat> so that's when we collaborated and wrote After Party Massacre. And the whole thing was I wanted to bring more extreme death metal and extreme horror movies together. It's been done a hundred times, of course, but not so much like, you know, bringing death metal. You go to a horror convention and and it's a everybody knows extreme out. movies, <laughs> but they don't know extreme death metal. But you go to a metal fest and everybody knows extreme horror movies, you know. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. just to try to, you know, push more of our metal on the horror kids, which... I don't think that works so well. I guess there's a reason why. I don't know. Some horror nerds just like their their horror, and they don't care about the music. I think, <laughs> but I didn't give up. You know, I still I tried to push it. <clears throat> um, and and being that you know, uh, John had Ibex at the time, Ibex Moon Records, right. and had access to a lot of bands, <clears throat> music that we wouldn't normally uh, was able to you know, have the, have the rights to put as fix, you know, music in the movie and, you know, stuff like that, where I didn't have to pay license and fees and whatnot, you know? Yeah, so, did. you know, it was cool. And we were able to do the soundtrack and it was a fun thing to do. It took us forever. Um, you know, spent a lot of money, you know, and, uh, but Hey, I did it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, but, but as like far as the conventions, like that's just, you know, I mean, I'm friends with a lot of vendors. You know, I've got to know a lot of people in the industry. So I like to go and I hang out at the cons <clears throat> and, uh, you know, or I'll help Christoph out or I'll help another vendor friend out or something like that, you know. So, yeah, I'm always around the celebs and hanging at the the VIPs and whatnot. I, I remember once I was told that I get invited to the VPs, VP, VIP parties because I'm like the hot chick at the party. That <laughs> 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 was a compliment. I'm like, yeah. okay. It must be the mustache. <laughs> yeah, it's the guy with the mustache. Yeah. Bring it, it back here. Dude, it's Kyle yeah. from yeah. the AC yeah, that, song. That hot chick with the mustache over there is getting real fat. You know, invite her over to the VIPs and mingle and give them free booze. And <laughs> that, that works. <laughs> Well, so I've admitted it on the show numerous times then. That's where I like to take these opportunities and kind of even talk harder that I am on a suggestion-only basis. I will not waste my time dicking around on you know, Netflix or whatever the hell these indecisive places are to waste so much time looking for a movie to then you know, not serve the hour and a half gap you even had to watch the movie uh, when you just you know go through it, and then it's absolute shit. So do you have any recommendations of uh, – cooler newer horror you've seen that's even good anymore newer horror i i don't know i don't know any newer horror really i yeah i still you're that guy you know, many years as i've been watching horror and i even grew up at you know at a drive-in theater and then a and, and then a regular movie theater my babysitters managed the 42 drive-in that used to be there on pro road there in oh, Medina. yeah yeah, no yeah. Shit. so i used to work there my job was to stop the kid or not stop them, but report the kids that are sneaking in through the woods. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, you know, when I'm 10, 12 years old, that's all I could do, you know? <laughs> and then, uh, so, but, you know, watched a lot of horror over the years and I'm still discovering movies from the seventies that I never seen. So when I go look for a new movie, I look for an old new movie. Right. I, I don't know any new stuff. I think, uh, I mean, just for a straight up gore, I like, that movie Terrifier. Uh, oh, the yeah, clown someone, one. Who else? Uh, Slasher yeah, Dave recommended Slasher it. Dave yeah. brought it up, and then the internet uh, comments were yeah. there. Yeah, you know, I would have never watched that on my own because I don't just pick movies off of Netflix either, but I, it was recommended and just say, hey, if you just want a cool, gory slasher, uh, if you like clowns or whatever, watch that one. It was pretty good. So Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, 
I guess that's a couple of years old, but that's definitely new. Yeah. I don't I don't know what else. Like uh King Folly recommended Lake Mondo, but I still haven't watched that one yet. Me neither. Have you seen Lake Mondo? No. So I haven't. Is it newer? Yeah, yeah. I think he said it was Australian oh. too. Yeah, King, okay. King was all about it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, to the point that I and I appreciated it too. I was like, "Give me five. And then he's like, "Just start with that." And yeah, he's then like, we'll come start back. with Mondo. Yeah, <laughs> like, all right. He's like, "Hey, that's the way to go. Like, just stick with my one. You ain't doing shit otherwise." <laughs> yeah. What is it's like? But I'm the same way, man. Like, yeah, new to me, uh, old movies. And so, like, what it, it, has there anything tickled your fancy from the '70s or? Well, it doesn't even matter. Just anything that's even not even necessarily new that's new to you that was a recent discovery. Um, shit, you know, it's funny. I never watched Black Roses before, which is a, it's not 70s, but it, hell, it might even be late 80s, but it, it's a, it's a, like, a rock roll nightmare. It's a, we were just talking about horror, heavy metal and horror. Yeah. It's a, a satanic rock band that comes into a town and, and you know, <laughs> possesses all the kids. <laughs> uh, so I had actually never seen that before. And I've had it in my collection for the last two years. And, you know, you got the shelf of movies that I, I don't have the time. And I finally just pulled that one off and was watching it. And it was funny because Matt Zorg was telling me about he's got a little rock and roll uh, Def Leppard type band that he's doing with Wayne Richards <clears throat> and uh, the kid on drums and stuff. And uh, he'd sent me the demo they did. I'm like, oh, I'm just about to watch. You know, this other heavy metal rock and roll movie, it just, it was good timing on it all. Um, but I don't know, that, that one was fun. Uh, but let's see, new, I, I don't know, put me on the spot. Um, I try to watch at least one movie every night, my wind down time, because I work day job, you know. <clears throat> um, and I get about a half a movie, and it takes me two night, two nights to watch one that's hour how, and a half that's movie. How I, that's how yeah. I am anymore. When you got a wife and kids and all that, man, it's uh, yeah. difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Um, damn, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I've watched recently. Uh, you know, last night I watched, fuck, I don't even remember. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> well, that's all right. I wanted to ask you about Kristoff because I've actually known Kristoff since I was probably from horrormerch.com. Correct? Yeah, Kristoff yeah. from, Mor- yeah, we got to give you a well, you know, reference. The internet, right, yeah. right. Yeah. From, yeah, there you go. Got from Ohio. Horrormerch.com. <laughs> Uh, but he he was uh, well, I don't know if he's from Cleveland, but he was always a Cle- Cleveland guy when I knew him uh, back then, and he always kind of seemed on the fringes of kind of the goth industrial scene, which I guess I was on the fringe because my cousin was a, a DJ and into all that too back then. And um, but anyway, uh, he ran a few shops up here at the time, I think, and in, in, yeah. uh, I definitely bought band shirts from his shop uh, while he had it. I think it was on Madison, <clears throat> maybe. But I, I don't know if you met him when yeah, you were Lakewood. here, or if you met him, yeah, or if you met him down there. Well, I met him in Cleveland. I met him, and when I was in Asheron, I guess it was like 2008, and uh, he had approached Vince about wanting. He was shooting a movie, a porn movie, and he wanted a band. And he was he was kind of already like thinking the after party massacre, but he wanted to do it more as a porn shoot. Okay. So he asked Vince if Asheron would come. <clears throat> he rented out Peabody's and would come down there and we would play and do the live footage. And, and, uh, so that's how I met him. But my, my, his, my exact moment of meeting him was on stage when he came up to me and I had my kid all set up. He's like, Hey, my band, um, uh, gaping anus is opening up and we throw <laughs> shit all over the stage. Um, do you want me to cover up your drums? And I fucking went off on him big time. <clears throat> Didn't even know the guy. And nothing's really changed since then. <laughs> he's, he's, we, we became actually great friends after that. Yeah. You know, we, we worked together for ever since then. But <clears throat> um, so he was living in Cleveland that time, and I think he might have had the stores or was just closing up the stores. Yeah. Yeah. He was kind of gothy, but uh, I think he was just getting out of his goth phase. And from what I understand, <clears throat> and. Um, but, uh, yeah, so he, you know, we worked together. He lived in Cleveland, and then he actually moved to Columbus just a few years ago. I don't know. I guess time flies. It could be four or five years ago now. Right, right. Uh, but he came down here because he, he just kind of wanted to get away from that scene up there. And <clears throat> and uh, and he and I worked together. You know, he was doing the Incantation Web Store. He was our merch guy on tour for a lot of years. Yeah, and, right. You know, and then, like I said, I, I – I try to help him out when I can uh, at conventions with sure. his horror merch and, and uh, you know, travel with him and stuff. So, um, yeah, and uh, he's a good dude. He is, <clears> yeah. <throat> he's always a funny, yeah. funny dude. 
Yeah, he but he isn't originally from Cleveland. He's from uh, uh, Frederick, Maryland. <clears throat> oh, okay. Um, or right outside of Frederick or Fredericton or whatever. <clears throat> but he's from Maryland, and that's where his family's at. Interesting. Okay, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. So I wanted to bring it back around then yeah. to uh, Incantation, and obviously you're talking about yeah merch and stuff like that. It looks like there was a recent revitalization of the web shop and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, speaking of with Christoph, he was running our web store for a while, for a lot of years, and uh, he just wanted to get out of it. <clears throat> and it just made sense to ask um, Hell's Headbangers, um, since, you know, you guys are the kings. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so that's what we did. I talked to uh, talked to Eric <clears throat> and Chase about it, and I, it seems like Eric's handling all of it. He's the one that I do all the you know, the proofs with and everything, but <clears throat> it still ran under incantation.com. Uh, uh, well, at least it decided to do it at the right. Uh, yeah. yeah fa uh, face um, Facebook messed up know, again. Really? I think you guys are frozen. Yep. Actually, keep going. Uh, <laughs> yeah, staring at you. I realized you weren't, <laughs> you weren't looking back. <laughs> But it's uh, you just said it, it was at incantation dot com, so I've got all. Yeah. That. Okay. Yeah. So it's still at incantation dot com. It just has <clears throat> uh, um, helps helping out or actually running it. I should say helping out doing all the work. Uh, <clears throat> it looks great, and we got a lot of new designs. And do you um, like do you like the uh, for the guy that's modeling the shirts? He looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I had somebody be like, "Is that you?" And I'm like. How, like this, that's a weird that that's out. a weird way to get it recognized. But I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, so we must have some fans of this show that you could be. I mean, I just saw the pictures myself recently. I'm like that. that, like, yeah, that was more today, obvious. Yeah. But the Hell's Headbangers guy is me too, wearing that mask sometimes. There's yeah, a, that's a popular so, guy, man. I, I didn't want. I didn't want that. Actually, I, I think I did an interview, and the dude's like, "That's so cool." I was like, "Well, it sucked the day I was there." <laughs> I didn't want to do yeah. it, you know. So yeah, it's, it's, so then it's like the template builder. So it'll be me for years to come. So it'll be like, great. It'll be yeah. my. They'll be re so that'll be the thing. Yeah, Reapers in every fucking product photo you've seen. Yeah, there'll be the Kyle has the mustache. There'll be that my anal cunt moment for Hell's Headbang. <laughs> well, I know when we first did it, you know, <clears throat> Eric asked, "Hey, do you have you know somebody else that can model it, just so we can have you know a different look or whatever?" And and that just didn't work out. He's like, ah, oh, I'll just, I'll take care of it. So there you go, man. That's you. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, so I find something of interest, you know, going though back through kind of like a lot of those member changes and stuff and Daniel from, uh, you know, the chasm being in the band and really at least at some point, I think still to this day, there's, you know, just a constant uh, revolving door of members sometimes with the incantation. Yeah. And especially when you're talking about like, you know, the chasm more vocally with Daniel, um, where the vocals and Craig Pillard, like the vocals kind of were definitely to be more fundamental classic years, so to speak. Do yeah. you think that that kind of gave a lot of its flavor, though, too, because you have all these different unforeseen, really, just, you know, help outs from friends and stuff that, it, you know, just it you can't help but create a sound for the band, um, you know, that is going to be inevitable in, in that kind of situation? Nobody intends, or we definitely didn't intend to have, you know, 10 different vocalists in the band over, you know, the span of 30 years. <clears throat> um but I, I do think every era from the different singers has a little different vibe. Uh, it was, I don't think it was ever intentionally, but it just kind of forms that way. <clears throat> um, and, and then especially like, you know, once John took over vocals, uh, you know, every one of his records, because he was never a vocalist and, and had to kind of learn, you know what I mean? And, and, and feel that out. So every record, and we're still, you know, just now even just he's getting – He's got the strongest voice now that he ever has. <clears throat> and I think it's because touring like crazy as well. And then, um, and now we, we never, we never demoed vocals. Like we always waited till last minute to put vocals in, but now we're adding vocals early <clears throat> and uh, just gives them more singing, more, more growling, you know, time. <laughs> um, but I, I might've got off your, your topic a little bit, <clears throat> but um, no, but, and do you think going that way though, too, like, like you said, because like I think at least in my world too, where you know work on music stuff, 
the music comes first and then you kind of add vocals in there that it, it is yeah. sometimes great to be like man if you kind of give the opportunity to uh and especially if they hit you where you just at least hear gibberish or something where it's like if the l- lyrics can at least have some sort of pattern where you can you know figure out the gibberish later it there's cues that could happen vocally too it could really help out the situation and there's a lot of great you know vocal cues and songs and stuff so i yeah. i mean it sounds like in, in a way you're kind of describing stuff like that though too yeah um yeah, I mean, the, the vocal kind of takes its own musical instrument when you're doing the patterns. Like, for example, I mean, I do a lot of the, the vocal patterns, <clears throat> and uh, and it's also just to break it up. You know, John has one way of looking at the riffs and the beat, and I have another, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and, um, you know, so that, that helps. We, we're realizing now, you know, in the last record and then this new one that we're, we're demoing and working on now, like, we want to pay a little bit more attention to, to the vocals. And... Um, you know, just be a little bit more dominant uh, to where maybe it wasn't before. Because even like on the Daniel records, like we didn't even know, like those, a lot of the, the songs that we didn't already demo that had vocal patterns, we never heard them. Daniel just got in the studio and just did it. He got a bottle of fucking tequila and he just went in there and ordered out a bunch of words. We had no idea how patterns, I don't think he did either. He just got there and felt it out, you know, which was great. And that's what makes the vocals on that album it's just yeah, yeah it's different for sure for the moment he yeah. may have had some stuff in his head but he never let us know <laughs> <laughs> we didn't, we didn't know how it was gonna turn out <laughs> now he, and he did those in like you were there when he did it he, like he didn't dial in in mexico and then and then no. you t- look, so oh, he was living no we uh I, I i even try i spent money on a lawyer an immigration lawyer we tried to get him citizenship oh, wow, we wow. wanted we wanted him to stay in the band. We did all we could, you know, and he was living illegally <clears throat> in Cleveland as John's roommate for those couple of years. Okay. You know, from the, the 95, I guess, I guess mid 95, I think is when, is when he, he came over on a work visa and he never went back. Gotcha. <clears throat> so, and then, uh, and he's still here. He never, he still never went back. I'm not going to say if he's here or legally or what, you know, but, <laughs> you know, he's been in little Chicago, a uh, little Mexico and Chicago for, for 20 some years now, you know, oh, okay. me and John are planning on doing, uh, <clears throat> you know, I did a little bit of diabolical sessions when I, we were supposed to do the split screen thing and I had just taken Q and a questions <clears throat> uh, from that era, but we're going to do one together as well. Oh, cool. uh, I, did, I covered on a lot of things. There's a, so that was a crazy time. There was a lot going on. <clears throat> um, that was a busy time. There's there's some juicy ones. You know, I mean, John have been doing a book for years now. <clears throat> um, we, we just we just get together and we talk like this <clears throat> to to a writer, and he's been you know writing it all out. I don't know oh, wow. why. We'll finish that, but <clears throat> it'll be a juicy book someday. <laughs> <laughs> Memoirs of incantation, huh? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Wow, that, yeah, that, there there would definitely be a lot to be said, especially in those early years. What do you like? You know, you watch like DVD bonuses, hear stories like this. I mean, this some of this stuff is it's getting up there where it's like, you know, I, dude, I can't remember yesterday. Sometimes it's yeah, like, yeah. Man, how do you remember some of this shit? Like, so you haven't been the guy though that like you know has that story to tell through these experiences. Do you find yourself going back to some of this stuff, going like, fuck, man, I hope my story's right. I think this is it. <laughs> <laughs> There's some stuff. I mean, I just hope I told the story truthfully the first time I said it, say, 10 years ago. That's the, like, if I'm telling the same story, even if it's years apart, as long as, you know what I mean? Yeah, I started yeah. reminiscing. Uh, but John's pretty good. He'll he'll remind me, and we'll argue about dates or, or you know, <laughs> oh, it didn't happen like that. You know, like, there's a couple things when we get together, and he's like, because the, there was one show I got really fuck up fucked up in Ramouski, Canada. <clears throat> and uh, I, I don't know. I took some PCP or something. I, it wasn't <laughs> supposed to be. But I got on this really bad trip, <clears throat> and uh, I couldn't. There was no way I was going to be able to play. So I was trying to pay drummers off, you know. And I'm like, come on, just get up there and play the set for me. <laughs> and um, and uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, from the Canadian Blood of Christ. Shit, I can't believe I can't think of his name. Um but, you know, John said I only tried to offer him, like, 20 bucks. I'm like, no oh, way, well, I'll offer him, like, $100, you know? And uh, so I'll argue about shit like that. You know, oh, okay. But, <laughs> That's funny. But I don't know. I, I remember a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I can't remember, yeah, what I had for breakfast. <laughs> but, you know, you start 
like especially like if you guys, you know, I start reminiscing, it starts coming back. You know, yeah, I mean? yeah. It takes me to have to think about it. You know, but yeah, there's a, uh, I mean, that's thirty years worth. I mean, that's right. just, you know, almost thirty for me. I mean, the band's over thirty now. Nearly thirty years, like you said, of knowing all the stuff that you know to like now, where I'm pretty sure you guys did play where there, you know, the state of metal really though is in where it's like there's seventy thousand tons of freaking crews around and all these really bigger like the acceptance and stuff that who would have ever even thought about during those times would have ever even came to be that like now you've actually had those opportunities and stuff like are you? Of the mind, we're like, this is fucking awesome. I'm glad it's to this. Or are you more of an elitist that's like, no, death metal needs to stay in <laughs> mom's basement? <laughs> oh, I, I'm glad it, it's grown for sure. I mean, <clears throat> dude, we struggled. Or we're still struggling, but we struggled way hard for a majority of the years. Yeah. People didn't, people didn't care for our style of death metal and incantation. You know what I mean? Like the old fuckers of death metal, and had been paid respect for that. <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, and I'm glad we have the opportunity to play 70,000 puns. Uh, I mean, I love it because I've been on it twice now. But hell yeah, keep inviting <laughs> us, you know? <laughs> and uh, so it's cool. And now that the guys are older, especially John's older, um, you know, he doesn't have a day job. <clears throat> so, you know, he kind of would like to live off of metal, you know, just tour. And yeah. he doesn't have, you know, big mortgage or nothing like that. So he can he can, he can play <clears throat> and, and survive and uh yeah, that's all he wants to do. He just wants to play. You know what I mean? Right. It's hard. You know, I, I can't. I, I have, like, you, wife and kids and family. and Yeah, but, I, but I'm glad all the, the bands are still doing it <clears throat> are getting a little bit more respect and being able to play, you know, the bigger stages <clears throat> and being accepted uh, as a larger band. You know, the bands right. and incantations and immolations are now the, uh, you know, not now the, but, you know, being treated as like cannibal corpse and right. morbid angel the other bands are around at the same time you know not that they're commercial bands but they're a little more com commercial than incantation right, you know what i mean right. <clears throat> so uh but being now treated on that same level uh this is weird because there's a lot of bands in the middle that way got it's just jumped the top of incantation you know what i mean the, you know and they got huge um you know say dying fetus you know they, yeah. they weren't around <clears throat> the members right. were but the band itself, not not so much, and they they you know they got huge, you know what I mean, and then incantations open for them, you know, and it's cool. That's the way it goes. But now I'm seeing it's more leveling out, you know, right. uh, just getting respect. I, I think that's it. I mean, damn, I mean, through all those all those tours, all those miles for all those years, you know, yeah. and and still put out records and having the labels that are putting out the records and selling merch and just having everybody. You know, recognizing that you know the band is valid still, <clears throat> you know, that that's respect, and that's all. That's all McAtee wants. You know, what I mean, he just wants to play metal. We just want to keep writing records. That's all I want to do. My part is just to keep, you know, playing. <laughs> yeah. Do what live I can, but just help putting out fucking records. You right. know. So. Yeah, and luckily with the advent of technology, it seems like it's making things that were otherwise, you know like you said, of the caliber it was, gain a little bit more traction than they otherwise could have uh, because, I don't know, there's just the eyes, the ability to reach these things. Or yeah. maybe shows like ours that are reaching out and they're like, hey, you know, who would be cool guests because I can do interviews so we don't have to hear Slash talk about incantation that he would never – have anything to talk about, yeah. but somehow yeah. be in a movie about, you know? I'm, I'm telling you, I'm waiting for a fucking Swedish death metal movie, and then Slash, like, I've never heard of it. Like, uh, exactly, why the fuck did you put this guy in the movie? <laughs> yeah. So, it's like the Amber no, movie. <laughs> but shows like yours definitely help, you know what I mean? A any kind of promotion stuff, you know? <clears throat> I mean, you get a fan base, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you're younger, you know what I mean? You know the, the young hip kids, man. <laughs> I, I well, don't. We're become we're the, becoming the geezers. It's becoming the well, that, and, well. That's why I'm always kind of curious asking those kind of questions, though, of being like that person that is, you know, kind of embracing this as it's happening, be, or, be, or really being old enough to yeah. be in this position where your work is old enough to where, yeah. like, you know, I I couldn't my stuff like is going to need another ten years to where I'll, I'll be there. But like you know, like yeah. Thomas just said, you know, being that rising geezer, where by that point <laughs> the, the internet, geezer. the internet industry of it though this whole niche market world will be something entirely different that right now i'm, I'm very intrigued by it because it's going to be the easier time where yes. this is going to get more and more the norm and be entirely different and who yeah. knows what things are going to be like then yeah but yeah until then 
until then. Yeah. Well, we this- appreciate you, Kyle. Yeah, we appreciate you being on here and, yes. and yeah. hanging out with us despite all of our technical difficulties. Hopefully that no one will fucking yeah. notice. So. Yeah, oh, I yes. expect that. I expect that in my world. <laughs> 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 hey, I got to point out, you got James's poster up there. <clears throat> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, James from Wing- Ringworm. Uh, yeah. Oh, furnace. Yeah. oh uh, yeah. Spider's Lullaby. It's, one. Yeah, it's yeah. not as good yeah. of a shot in the... There you go. Yeah, yeah we can't I really get it, but... I, uh, he was drawing. I was in his shop <clears throat> getting tattooed all those years ago when he was when he was drawing that. Oh, nice. <clears throat> he, worked, he worked on that, I think, for a long time. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, I've been sitting here staring at it. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you is. go. Yeah, there it is. Hey, maybe you should put a plug. So I don't think I ever mentioned at all the new Incan record comes out in uh, in the, in August. Yeah, absolutely mention it. And next what's it going to be next called? Week drops, the next week drops the first promotional video. Oh, nice uh, record. <clears throat> so I don't know. Squeeze that in somewhere. What's the, what's <laughs> the, what's the name of the record? Well, it's not. It's not released yet. Next week is when the title gets released. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So I probably shouldn't say it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to... But I would, but I shouldn't. There's our, there's our impeccable timing right here that we knew all that was happening. Shed the Skin's new album, Incantation's yeah. launching a new single next week, and that's yep. what we do here on, on Into the Darkness is we yep. go into you the go. darkness. You guys, you just you know it. You feel that metal mm-hmm. so much. It's like, I know I got to do this right now. Metal is telling me to fuck, call Kyle. That's it's right. It's coming out next week. Yes. Yeah, send him smoochy faces. Yes. got to get him on. And then I smooched it up, so mwah, to you. <laughs> internet that i this is going to be my point though to tell you what you need to stay tuned so you need to do what the internet requires and that's hit that bell subscribe to the channel like share comments we want to hear those kyle severn uh title names or whatever you know okay. alpha incantation yes. blank. and whoever whoever does the best job of that is going to get a heart and maybe a comment back that Good job, dude. But you wouldn't know unless you tried that, and you wouldn't know unless you subscribed to all that. So do all that, and that means we'll be able to talk to you next time.